Today, we had an emergency with one of my servos, Chong. Chong's ear, it's kind of flopped over and it's filled with this liquid. Come here, buddy. Chong, we gotta go into the lockout. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's already hissing at me. We're gonna have to actually sedate him to operate on him, and it's gonna be crazy. What is up everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you guys are having just an absolutely amazing day and for those of you that are new here, well I'm Jacob and welcome to my jungle. Now if you guys saw the title and thumbnail, you will know for today's video that today we had an emergency with one of my servos, Chong. Basically, Cheech and Chong, they got enrichment coconuts a couple days ago and when I gave the servo boys the coconuts, Cheech became possessive over his coconut. Chong tried to steal his coconut and Cheech actually swatted Chong's ear. When he swatted his ear, he must have caused a little bit of a scratch and now Chong's ear is swollen and filled up with a hematoma like a balloon. And of course, that is not normal. So right now, it is Sunday, so we have no days off. So I gave my vet a call and he is actually heading over right now because we got to take care of this problem right away because we don't want this hematoma to grow. This is actually pretty harmless. It's just a pocket filled with fluid. So we actually have to drain that fluid out. Guys, this is crazy because you never know what the heck is going to happen when you have a zoo full of animals. Every day there's something new. So if you guys want to know how Chong is, if he's going to make it, what the heck is going on with Chong, well guys, you are in the right place and we're going to hop into that in just a second. We're going to go look at Chong, but first we've got to feed the turtles in the pond. And the turtles that we're going to feed are right here at the front door. So we haven't shown this pond in a while. So we're going to make our way over to it. Let's see if we can get the light to focus because right now it looks like nothing. So you can see we've got one albino turtle in there and we actually have like little koi fish in here. You can see the little koi fish kind of swimming around and we got one of my really friendly slider friends right here so he actually wants to come over because he definitely wants some food and we've got another turtle friend somewhere over here we got the turtles basking dock but basically this is one of our turtle friends right here that lives in the pond and let's grab this guy right here this is a really cool albino red ear slider so this is an albino turtle that we have in here we're gonna let him go so you can see he's got the red eyes but what I want to show you guys I want to show you this little guy right here wait wait oh we got him I think we got him oh we got two for one we got the caramel and the albino so the one we just picked up a second ago is this little guy and then this is the caramel so you can really see the difference between these two turtles. They're two different color morphs of the same species. So we got the albino right here, which has got those beautiful red eyes, and then the caramel has these dark black eyes. Both really beautiful turtles, and let's see if they want to go. We're going to let him go. He's going to take off, and we're going to let our albino go. Now what we do want to do is we want to sprinkle some turtle pellets in here. We give them turtle pellets as well as some fish flakes for the turtles, and the fish are big enough too that they'll eat the pellets. So this guy is definitely smelling it. I could sit here all day long watching the turtles. Now we got the little albino albino in the back that smells the food he's coming over and I think all the turtles and fish are gonna love their food so now that we got to feed the turtles at the front door pond and we're waiting for the vet to get here we're gonna head to the back and check up on Chong so we made it over to Cheech and Chong my African servos and like I was telling you guys Chong's ear it's kind of flopped over and it's filled with this liquid so we got the vet coming today so right up high here this is Mr. Cheeto Man, so this is Cheech. Now Cheech is all good. Cheech is perfect, and you can see Cheech's ears are pointed up. They got these really nice pointed ears, and now Chong down below here, you can take a look. Actually, these are the coconuts that they were fighting over that caused this to happen. If you look at Chong's ear, right here, you can see that one ear is pointed and the other one is kind of flop. Okay, all right, I'll stay back. You can see right here on Chong's ear, you can see that his right ear is perfect and pointy, but you can see this left ear is kind of curled over. That's the ear that's actually filled with that hematoma. Definitely is a little bit uncomfortable for him, but buddy, helps on the way. So from the beginning, Cheech has always been the friendlier servile, so Chong is a little bit more standoffish. Both these boys are really sweet when they want to be, but just like any cats, when they don't want to be touched, they're not going to come near you. So who we have right here is we got Mr. Cheeto Man. Come here. Oh, okay. All right. Goodbye. And we have Mr. Chong Man. So you can see that ear is folded over, but what I do want to do is I kind of want to give a physical exam. It's got this spongy-like texture. So hey, buddy, come here. Hello, you are a nice boy. So you can see, oh, it's definitely bothering him. Hey, okay, all right, bye. So we're not gonna bother these servo boys until the vet gets here. So I'll be back with all of you once he's here. One hour later. And here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Goldsmith. Doc, what are we doing here today? You ready for today? I'm all ready. This is gonna be pretty, pretty straightforward. It, it's something that happens to dogs a lot when they shake their heads, but not, 
Very common in cats. Yeah, I've never seen it before on a cat. I've seen it on the on the the knees of cats, but I've never seen it on their ears. So right now, Doc is getting all the medication ready. We've got our net in case we need it. And then I think we're gonna be using the wood for the cat to lay them on. So even on Sundays, there is no days off when it comes to taking care of these animals. So we're actually gonna have to dart the cat. We're gonna have to sedate this animal to do this procedure. This animal is not gonna sit still if we were to actually try and do it with him awake. So we're gonna have to actually sedate him to operate on him and it's gonna be crazy. All right, everyone, we got all of our supplies ready. So Doc, what do we got here? We got our blowpipe, we've got, we got everything. All the suture stuff that I will need, uh, sterile gauze, drape. Okay. Uh, we're gonna shave it up and scrub it up and simple. Simple. Okay, yeah. so we got the blowpipe here, we got a blowpipe, we got all of our supplies in a cart, and then this is pretty much everything we're gonna use here. So we've got the shaver, we've got the towel, we got a clean piece of wood, we've got all of our hemostats, we've got all of our needles, we've got all of our gauze, we got we got everything. So what I have to do right now before we can get started is I actually have to get the serval in the lockout. We gotta get Mr. Chong, man. We also gotta lock our door because we do not want any escapes. Now the reason we're gonna get him inside of this lockout here is we don't wanna dart him inside of the big enclosure. We wanna do it in this nice small space where it's gonna be nice and easy. Now we have Mr. Cheeto Man waiting at the door. But we don't need you, buddy. We need your little friend Chong. So come here, Mr. Cheeto. Hey, look, let's go this way. So we got Mr. Chong Man. Come here, buddy. Chong, we gotta go into the lockout. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's already hissing at me. I think I think he already knows what the heck's going on. Come here, buddy. Come on. So we actually drained his water out because whenever you're gonna sedate animals, you don't want them to have any water in their system. So all right, buddy, let's go this way. All right, come on. Let's get in the lockout. Thank you, buddy. It's okay, buddy. We're gonna help you out. So you guys, again, you can see right there on his ear. You see that one ear on one side. It's a little bit flopped over, and that's what we gotta take care of today. So do we have our dart? Is it loaded in? It is loaded. It is loaded. Let's see it. Can we see it on the end? No, no, it's shoved in. Oh, it's shoved in. All right, so you ready? I am. All right, we're ready, baby. So it's been almost three minutes since we darted Chong and he's starting to slow down. He's starting to get a little bit wobbly. So that's how we know the medication is working and he should be down in about two minutes. All right, so we're heading on in right now and we're gonna see if he's out. Now he should be mostly sedated at this point, but we have Doc in here right now checking up on him. He doesn't feel hot. All right, so we're picking him up right now to take him out. Now I'm gonna come right here now. We're gonna get the door and we're gonna bring him right out here, right over this way. Bring him right here on the piece of wood. So this is where we're going to be doing our, our operation today. So right now we just put some lidocaine on the ear, so it really just no, numbs everything. Under the skin. Under the skin. Under the base of the ear. Okay. So, like Doc was saying, it's right here under the skin at the base of the ear. That's to keep everything nice and numb so he doesn't feel anything. So right now we're actually shaving the ear. That's so we can get a nice clean area to work with. So right there you can see almost that like balloon bubble like that right there is where that hematoma is. That's where it's all filled up and we're gonna have to drain it out. One minute 37 seconds later. So right now we've got pretty much everything done right now doc is suturing up the ears we've got the ears nice and drained you can see we've got all of our sterile area ready to go chong man is doing all right he's nice and calm he's nice and sedated he's not going to remember any of this but this is the lifestyle of having these animals and taking care of them it's literally no days off so right now we just finished our procedure with mr chong man and he's slowly starting to wake up. So you can see he's moving his tongue. He's starting to get muscle movements in his legs. So for overnight while he wakes up so we can keep a close eye and monitor him, we're actually gonna be moving him into the crate, into the house to make sure he recovers well. The next morning. Good morning, good morning, my beautiful people. It is the morning time, the day after our procedure. Now for the night, we brought Chong in. Chong has been indoors for the night. We've had him on a heat pad on half of his crate. We were waking up throughout the night just to ensure that he has a safe recovery. We've been checking on his body temperature to make sure he's not too caught, not too cold, because whenever you're recovering from anesthesia and when you're under anesthesia, there always is that risk of hypothermia. So we wanted to make sure that that was not gonna be an issue. 
So guys, I'm sure you're wondering how Mr. Chong Boy is right now. So right now, I'm gonna lift it up in three, two, one. Hello, Mr. Chong Boy, hello man, hello. So we got Mr. Chong Man here, Chong Boy is awake. Now we're just gonna open this on up. So if you look at Chong's ear, you can see that the ear is still flopped over even though we did perform the procedure. Now his ear may always kind of stay and kind of have that cauliflower-like ear, but we have been taking you know, temperatures inside of here, making sure everything is nice and warm. We also have some fresh water for Mr. Chong Boy if he's thirsty, but you can't see that his ear is still flopped over, but it's pretty much completely drained. It's not gonna be able to fill back up anymore. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you doing, sir? So Chong is being really sweet. Now we just wanna leave him alone, but looks like he's making a good recovery, so we don't wanna bother him that much anymore. So we're just gonna close this on up, and we're probably gonna put him back outside at the later part of today, but we just wanna cover this up to keep him nice and safe. And that, my friends, is going to end today's episode. I hope all of you guys did enjoy watching today's video on Chong's ears. I'm so blessed that I have an incredible team of veterinarians that I can call upon on a Sunday to come over and help out. I've said it once before and I'll say it again. When you have animals, you never know what the day is going to bring. And I'm pretty much on call for this 24-7, 365 days a year. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below a prayer. And you guys want to stay updated on Chong and his ear. Well, guys, all you have to do is subscribe below.